When I was about maybe 11 years old, my uncle's best friend uh, was always just teaching me stuff, teaching me different fighting techniques, street fighting techniques, uh, everything. It was like maybe 1989, something like that. And uh, he was showing me like Muay Thai techniques, things like that. He said, he said to me, you know, if you, uh, if you got really good at Muay Thai and you're a really good wrestler, he said, you could be the best in the world. And this was like pre, pre UFC, pre all that stuff. So he was like, on top of his, you know, he just knew what was up. He could like read the future or something. I don't know, but I mean, he just about hit the hit the nail right on the head, if you know what I'm saying. Because I mean, look where this sport sport evolved. You know, and I started wrestling in high school. I uh, did pretty well. I was undefeated in high school, but then uh, some things happened and I had to quit. But uh, after that, I moved on to amateur boxing, actually where I met Chris Smith. Uh, I was like 18, 17, 18, and he was like 16, I think. And that's where uh, we met and we started boxing at the, uh, the boxing club together. And uh, yeah, well, then when I was like 23, I started doing uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA with UFC fighters Dennis Holman, Benji Raddick. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. To my last stand, the one man marching band, hard to the party in, heart of a lion, the highest in command. These are the badlands, mind of a madman. So ring the bells or bring a pure hell, eliminate and exhale. I have no equal to this evil, my skills are unparalleled. Yeah, I mean, my first like fights, my first boxing matches and stuff, they were like, uh, they were surreal, like dreams. Like, it was just, it was crazy the amount of uh, adrenaline and. You know, it's like I had the fight and I couldn't really remember what happened. It was just uh, just a brawl. All the technique went out the window, just swinging for the fences, you know, forgot everything I learned. And, you know, it definitely took a few times before I started getting the rhythm down. I started, uh, you know, really thinking in the ring, taking my time, relaxing. So Thailand is a lot different than the States, uh, you know, especially like the Muay Thai aspect of it, things like that. They train a lot differently than we do. It's a lot more technique, um, you know, a lot slower paced, a lot more slow paced. You know, in the States, we, we, we brawl in practice, we spar hard. You know, here it's, you know, they don't spar like we do because they're fighting like every two weeks. You know, every week they're fighting to feed their families, things like that, you know. Whereas like MMA fighters and things like that, we're fighting maybe, you know, four times a year, five times a year. You know, and they're fighting twice a month. So it's, a, it's definitely just a different style out here. Uninhibited, sick, degenerate. So far gone, I'm lost in the mix. Nothing lasts forever. Trying to keep it together. Should have known one day it would come down to this. Took the blame, played the game. But now no longer will I be holding back. Embrace the pain, release these chains. I just can't wait for an outbreak. Uh, you know, I think the perfect training schedule is different for every person. Every individual is different. And you know, I believe that everybody needs to be trained and needs to be taught, you know, at their own uh, their own style. You know, we're all different human beings. You know, we're no one's the same. For me personally, I like to train twice a day. Uh, you know, six times a week. You know, Saturday is usually like one one time. So really, 11 times a week is uh, is what I train. And uh, but you got to just feel your body, know your body. You know, and, and have people around you, coaches and things like that, that understand you and know when you you're being pushed too hard, when you need a day off and when, uh, when it's time to push you and really push you and, you know, get you in shape for that next competition, that next fight.
I have uh, lots of special techniques that I that I like to use in the ring, you know. And uh, I'd show you those right now, but then I would have to kill you. And uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I got things that I like to go to that are my go-tos, and a lot of the guys that I train with know these moves, things like that. Uh, I don't like to give stuff away on camera because this is my go-to stuff. You know, I, I believe that, you know, the toughest guy in the world is the guy that is the master at you know, at four moves, the master of five moves, and he can do these moves. Maybe this guy's got a triangle choke, and he, he's only good at that triangle choke, but you cannot stop it. You know, take for example the Ronda Rousey. Everybody knows she's gonna throw the armbar in, but you can't stop it because she's done it. She's done that armbar 100,000 times, and you can maybe train for the defense of it maybe 5,000 times in a, in a camp. You know what I mean? There's no comparison. So, you know, those are the most dangerous people in the world. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna go right into the first part. I'm going to start in my guard, the guard locked here on Chris, and uh, for this one I need to have wrist control, either wrist control, uh, an overhook, like an overhook ladder hook, or collar tie, and the collar tie up, but for this drill I'm just going to go with uh, standard wrist control, like this, okay, so this would be like to start off, and switch to here collar tie up on this side real tight, just like a Muay Thai clinch. And then I'm gonna go right into just a basic scissor sweep. I'm gonna take shrimp my hips out, and then I'm gonna shrimp back in, okay? My leg, this leg has to be down all the way to the mat on his knee. My other leg, the top leg, needs to be all the way across his hip. When he's up like this, turn to the side a little bit, Chris. It needs to be completely across his belt line, okay? A lot of the mistakes that people make where well, this doesn't work is because they're too shallow here. They're not getting this leg all the way across. I need to be all the way across here, okay? Come back down. When I'm here, I got the wrist control. I got the collar tie up. I'm pulling him in towards me, putting his weight on my leg, allowing me then to sweep him in the opposite direction. And I'm just coming right to mount, okay? Idols and MMA. You know, my idols, you know, I grew up with the old school guys. I like all the old school guys, you know, Vanderlei Silva, you know, Hoy Gracie. You know, I like the Northwest guys like, you know, uh, Dan Henderson, Randy, Chel Sonnen, um, you know, Lin Lin, uh, tough guys. And then, you know, personally, it's just the guys that I grew up that were my coaches. You know, uh, Dennis Holman, one of the best nogi grapplers in the world. You know, Benji Raddick, one of the, you know, just the toughest SOBs in the world. You know, some of my other coaches, you know, guys that I look up to, uh, Nick Cunning, um, you know, the Oliver brothers, Dwayne Oliver, guys like that. The time has come to bring out the beast, the Contagious made circumstances. There'll be no next time. No time mouse, nigga. No do overs. No second chances. Just praying and hoping. Some devotion. The hearts would open and turn it all around. But hatred made me to build me up. But the love was enough to bring it back down. I was in for the long haul, but even the strong fall. Soldiers will die on the battlefield. Dedication and sacrifice. Everybody always asks that question, what's your best fight? What's your best fight? You know, and I think that I'm I haven't shown my best fight yet. I think it, my best fight is to come. You know, I've had um, good fights, but I, I haven't shown what I really have to offer, you know. I had a, a good fight with Dijiro Takase. That's the guy that beat Anderson Silva, you know, and I beat this guy up for three rounds, you know, and uh, it was, uh, I, I think I came out on a shitty end of a, a bad decision, you know. I think a lot, of, a lot of people thought that. But, you know, this guy fought the toughest guys in the world, beat Anderson Silva, and I took him to the distance and was smashing on him, you know, ended the, beat him up the first round, he got the second round, and I beat him up the third round. You know, and you know, fighting a, an Asian guy in Asia when it goes the distance sometimes doesn't work out in your favor. But uh, yeah, that that was a good fight. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot more more good fights to come.
<laughs> <laughs> the worst fights, you know, I just had some shitty amateur fights. Um, basically, I'd get a call, you know, I'd be sitting on the couch for a couple, two, three months. Hey, you want to fight this guy? This guy, you know, no good. He's, you know, he's, he's not even training or something like that. I show up. Well, that guy doesn't show up to the fight. So then I end up having to fight like two weight classes above my weight class. And, you know, when I was young, I just didn't care. I was like, I'll fight anybody, you know what I mean? I don't care whether I'm in shape or not, you know, and I'd be like weighing in at, you know, 200 pounds fighting somebody 270, you know, and, and uh, I'd still go out and I'd smash, but you know, when you're out of shape, you know, sometimes the cardio just doesn't, you know, cardio kills. Yeah, so I just signed a contract with uh, Top FC in uh, South Korea, and uh, yeah, I'm fighting a tough uh, Korean fighter. Uh, it's gonna be good. It's a big show, man. It's gonna be televised, and uh, yeah, it's, I, I can't wait to get in there and really show what I can do against a top level guy. So yeah, also I'm looking for sponsors. You know, if you want to hit me up, you want to sponsor BK, you know, I'm gonna be coming out there, gonna be whooping some ass, boy. So BK Productions Inc. at Hotmail.com. Send me an email. You want to sponsor your boy? What's up? The time has come to bring out the beast The vital disease inside of me When darkness calls, you no longer be This is the end of eternity You know, here, here in Asia and in Thailand specifically, it's like, you know, I came here maybe like four years ago, five years ago, right when even it was just starting to really kind of peak up, you know what I mean? I mean, some of the big camps have been doing it for a while, but it's starting to take off, you know. It's, uh, you're starting to see these amateur shows in Thailand just showing up everywhere, you know. It's like, at the amateur shows, I think they're having like 60, 70 fights sometimes like that, you know, in Bangkok. It's like, it's, it's so freaking pop, getting so popular. It's crazy, you know. It's just, you're seeing it everywhere in all the little, you know, the little provinces everywhere. It's, it's going to be big here in Asia and in Thailand. The time has come to bring out the beast The vile disease inside of me When darkness calls, you no longer be This is the end of eternity Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna take this as far as I can um, I still feel great, I feel like I'm just coming into my prime uh, You know, my jiu-jitsu's solid, my stand-up's solid, my wrestling's solid you know, I believe I got the full package. I want to take this as far as I can, you know, whether it's the biggest organizations in uh, Asia or if I take it back to the States, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I got a lot to offer in this sport, and uh, I'm going to take it uh, to the highest level possible. Yeah.